Yeah? 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 We live? Oh my goodness. Welcome, welcome, y'all. I'm Space. And I'm Sochi. And, and we're, we're Art, Art for, for the, the people. people. We're back at it again. Week four. Week four, that's right. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy to think how how fast this time has gone in, in the season. So I'm really excited. Same here, same here. So what are we doing? Who are we? Who are we? So we're Art for the People. Uh, we're an art collective that really focuses on, you know, the production of of political art and the criticism of art, but not just like any art, but like what does it mean to make anti-capitalist art um, yep. in a space where like, you know, politics isn't really talked about in art. Nope. And so, you know, with coming on to MCR, um, you know, that was really the big thing that we're trying to do mm -hmm. is just bring art criticism and talking about uh, the Billboard Hot 100s and like what is what are these specific songs talking about? Yeah. And what is the political nature of it? Um, but that's what we've been doing, mm -hmm. right? If you've tuned in, we've talked about Beyonce. Ariana, Ariana Grande, Grande, Future, Future, last week. yep. Um, but this week we're gonna change it up. We Ooh. were, we did not, we're not choosing a top 100 this week. We already, we're already messing up the whole format. I Four weeks know. in, too cocky. There's only five weeks in a season, five, five shows in and a season. Four, we're and like, we're switching it up. Four is like, all right, these hot 100s are, they're all the same, yeah. right? Well, you know, I, I will say about that, I do think that. We got pretty deep with the three different songs mm. into like the three different categories. So with Beyonce, we talked about the class position of, of, of artists. Then with yeah. Ariana Grande, we got into capitalist ideology versus feudal ideology. We brought feudalism. And with into Future, this. we talked about the class character of claustrophobia and the paranoia of the bourgeoisie and the petty bourgeoisie. Like, You're scared, y'all. We, we, we got into a lot of stuff. Yeah. I will say that. No, for sure. And so this week we wanted to switch it up a little bit and really talk about a song that's more progressive. Mm. Uh, so we really wanted to shout out, to, to give a shout out to No Name. No you know? Name, that's right. So, you know, we're choosing the song this week. Balloons. Balloons by No Name. Um. And, you know, this one's really different from the other ones that yeah. we've uh, generally been listening to um, and talking about. Uh, and we're going to talk a lot about more of the progressive elements of the song. Yeah, because, you know, we've been talking so much smack about, okay, this bourgeois art is doing this wrong, that wrong. This is bourgeois ideology. This is capitalist ideology. And, and going on and on, which is helpful but yeah. I think if you're just learning by negative example, you're just learning about what's wrong, it's not particularly inspiring. Right. And I think something that we're trying to do with Art for the People is to really inspire people to study revolution collectively and also to make art collectively. For sure. And to really put these ideas into practice. Mm. So... If we just focus on all the things that are wrong with capitalism, but we aren't talking about ways that we can crit criticize that in ways that are helpful mm. then or inspiring or dope to listen to, you know, we're only getting half of the story. Now, I will say, even with No Name Song, there's going to be some shortcomings that we're going to be talking about. For sure. But the chunk that we're really going to focus on is the positive, the amazing, the awesome. Yeah, let's learn through a progressive example, a positive That's right. example. That's right. So we've got Big Dog MCR uh, player Mauricio, and Mauricio is really enveloped in conversation right now. We love to see it, talking to the people, a man of the people. The masses, as But, say. you know, he's going to play a little snippet for us of the new no name or not the new no name song uh balloons and uh it's going to be the second verse of the song so really excited to to listen to that a land before land monasteries and narcan casual white fans who invented the voyeur 
fascinate them with morning. They hope the trauma destroy her. Why everybody love a good sad song? A dark album like Tell Me That Your Homie Dead, Your Mama Dead, Your Brother Bled. I'm on the street, the corner where the Walgreens and White Castle is. Ooh, wee, yeah, we know that you miss them. And if you sing about a sister, then we buying a ticket for real. Front row center, still gratitude, she love them. But she can't tell if it's genuine or just consumption. Analyze the gumption, monopolize the landscape. She's just another artist on the trauma to her fan base. Ridiculous. That's crazy. Do you remember the first time we heard the song? No, I remember. We were we were in the car. We the the album dropped and we were like, all right, we gotta listen to this. Do you remember where we were going to? to Orlando? St. Augustine. St. Augustine. We're going to historic city listening to a historic album. Wow. Nice little touch. No, for real. And I remember we were talking to to a friend. Yeah. And after every song, yeah. we would we would send a little a little voice note of yeah. like a little political analysis. Shout out Krishna. Shout out Krishna. Yeah. So, do you remember? Do you want to recreate the voice message that we sent about this track? Which which is just a different way of me saying, "What were your first thoughts about this song?" Because you looked at me in a panic, like you know damn well I don't remember <laughs> anything I said at that point. <laughs> Uh, these eyes are true. <laughs> um, yeah, no, like we really talked about how, you know, looking at No Name's journey and how really like throughout her 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 development as an artist, um, how she's really come around um, to not just talking about like the the emotions in her life the experiences that she's had in her life but really also political development mm. like i know for me personally for no name no name helped politicize me what basically yeah what? y'all remember no name's book club i, I was, remember i was in it i was in it uh start of covid i was in it and really like started reading through that and like really started getting interested in like what is politics? What What'd you read? What'd you read? Oh, I read uh, George Jackson's Blood in My Eye, um, and you know from there on I was like, whoa! Like blew my mind. Like what? What do we? Do, what do we need to do? You know, yeah. for even to 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 start thinking about how conditions were in the '60s and '70s and. Uh, how conditions are completely different conditions of like activists and conditions mm. of like the political scenes yeah. are, are completely different and so really thinking about how do we how do we get there okay. yeah and that mix of like what's different and then also what is the same because we still live in a capitalist imperialist world we still exactly. need to make a revolution we are still dealing with exploitation capitalist crises inflation sure. and a lot of that stuff has gotten worse Mm. And the organized revolutionary movement is way smaller than it was then. Right. Because even in kind of my research of different revolutionary music at the time, like, like did you know that Bob Dylan wrote a song no, about that, George Jackson? That literally blew my mind. I did not know. I didn't know either, you know? Uh, and so lots of artists at the time wrote odes to George Jackson. Who even A lot of people just don't know who he is. Wild. So... So I, I agree with that whole, you know, that whole journey of, of, of no names. And I know that around this song, there's um, some particular controversy mm. about the guest verse of Jay Electronica, mm. which we're just not going to get into, which is rare for us because if there's something, we get into it, and then you think you it's done, and then we get into it even deeper. You know we talk about that tea. But this time we don't. we're not. So we're not going to talk about... Uh, that's per like the particular controversy about it. But yeah, I remember when the beat is insane about this. The drums are mm. so crisp. The piano is lush. Mm. Uh, that bass line, when it comes in, it's so, it adds a whole new groove, a whole new dim dimension to the, the rhythm of the piano and the drums. So artistically already was one of my favorite tracks of the entire album. And yeah. then politically, I think it's one of the, the, the most, n maybe not even necessarily the most sharp, but she asks, she asks some really good questions on this track. Mm. And so in other songs, some conclusions I think she draws are great. Some mm, have some disagreements with it. So I think that's why this song is so great to talk about because she raises so many great questions, which if we see the role of the artist 
is to reflect society. Well, an artist's arms only stretch out so long, so the mirror can only be so big. We don't have superhuman arms. We can't get this enormous mirror and then just go over the entire earth, right? We're always going to reflect just a portion of, of what is going on. So even in, in the right. reflection, there's an artistic choice. Hmm. And a lot of times it's to just get people to hold the mirror with you. Which, which means that they're not only just looking at the reflection, but actively reflecting on what yeah. is going on, which just means starting to ask a lot of questions, which this song does. Yeah, yeah. And to kind of like contrast that with the, the other songs that um, we have been talking about, mm -hmm. this song is something that we can really relate to. Yeah. We can relate to a lot of no names traumas yes. and experiences and the questions yes. that she's asking aren't just questions that she's uh are, she's not the only one asking these questions you know yeah and, and what's interesting about that is a lot of um you know a good amount of lyrics is is about what does it mean to be a black artist in this society or mm. a black woman in this society yeah. but it's only really a most minicule sidestep and then you get to, okay, what, what really does it just mean in general to live uh, uh, under a capitalist society? Where, of right. course, black people in the society face very particular forms of oppression and racial oppression and yep. then get, you know, patriarchal oppression for women. You add those two things together, so you, you get a good sense of particularities. Mm, but yeah. that's in the general of capitalist society. Yeah. And I think other particular forms of oppression lay really close to these other forms of oppression so that it doesn't take too much imagination to kind of generalize some of these issues that she's putting forward. And yeah. that's not always the best thing to do or we don't just want to sidestep some of these particularities, but in terms of making music that really speaks on the ills of society, it's important to take both, right? What are these particular forms of racial oppression and then how does that manifest in the general oppression of capitalist society? Yeah. And so we're mainly going to be talking about the general oppression. So I have some really good lyrics that I drew out from the song that I wanted to talk to. But before that, I wanted to see, is there anything else you wanted to say about the song before we do that? Yeah, no. Uh, this song, I think it, it is... Uh, really asking some key questions that we we, we need to get into. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. All right, so let me look it up right here. So we have uh, a good portion of, of a verse, and I'm just going to read it. So it says, fascinated with mourning, they hope the trauma destroyer. Why everybody love a good sad song, a dark album like, Tell me that your homie dead, your mama dead, your brother bled all on the street. The corner where the Walgreens and White Castle is. Ooh wee, yeah, we know that you miss him. And if you sing about a sister, then we buy in a ticket for real. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. It's so beautiful, I put it back down, even though I damn well know that I'm going to need to hold it to reference it again. No, that's so real. But it's beautiful and also so sad. Yeah. It's the reality in which we're living where we, you know, there are elements of, like, as an artist that people, mm -hmm. like, there are if issues and difficulties with just gaining popularity and getting big or, you know. and Tell just me about <laughs> it. <laughs> and so really seeing, like, the artist has kind of these contradictions that they want to f that they need to face, right? Yeah. In, in getting big. Like, they want to be able to write whatever they want. Yeah. But they also need money. True. And they want to make a living out of, True. out of this, out of this career. Yeah. And so, you know, like, she's really acknowledging that in order to make something that people want to buy, that includes, like, selling your trauma, selling your sadness, and selling the the deepest like and the the hardest parts about yourself but not in a positive way yeah exactly and and i think there's a question of look who's not traumatized in our capitalist society yeah. 
right? Obviously, there's different degrees of trauma. There's many different life experiences. But who under capitalism isn't traumatized? And so here, that first line, fascinated with mourning, they hope the trauma destroyer. I think what that really, in general, reflects is this pessimism under capitalist society. That because we are all traumatized in this society, because we all go through traumatic experiences, and because we talk and see other people who go through these traumatic experiences, we then get a real sense of pessimism that, well, this is, this is the best we got. And there's a really great Ursula Le Guin quote, a science fiction author, um, who said that it's easier to imagine the end of the world than the end of capitalism. Mm. That's and, some deep, deep nihilism and just the yeah. pessimism. Yeah, yeah. Of, like, yeah, I could see this place burning, and but so, not in a good way. Exactly, and so much art reflects that. And yeah. I think, I mean, most of us, before we were politicized to some degree, probably thought that, right? Yeah, I uh, think it's a popular thing. Yeah. And if you don't know, if you don't have different of different framework to see the world like it makes sense to yeah see it just yeah end if you don't have that revolutionary optimism then it's mm. just like what are you gonna do and i think that's really the, the the counter position here right where okay the way that society functions right now the way that we consume art right now is really focused on negative emotions and that has a positive aspect to it where okay if you're able to connect your suffering to the machinations, to the way that capitalist society functions, the limits of the society, that's a positive force, right? Because that then counterposes this whole idea that everything's just happy-go-lucky under a capitalist society. But it has its limitations. And if you don't connect the suffering under capitalism with revolutionary optimism, then you're very likely to promote n nihilism. Yeah, and even with that, like even if you see like the trauma, the, the horrors, you know, the suffering under capitalism, and you don't see it as a happy-go-lucky thing, you, but you see capitalism as, oh, this is the, be well, the best we've got. Yeah. Then that's also like just a, a a pathway for for accepting the way that things are and accepting mm. the suffering and um not really thinking like what is the end gonna yeah. look like if if we don't change you yeah. know no that's right that's right and so here she's talking about kind of the degrees in which that's happening right so okay tell me that your homie dead got one your mama dead we got two your brother bled all on the street, so we already have three three casualties there. Then we add some more detail, right? The corner where the Walgreens, the White Castles. Give me vivid. Make me feel, give me immersion. Make me feel like I'm really there, you know? And th then it's going to count for even more. You know, and it's kind of like this, oh, you know, we, we know that you miss it. We know you're going through lots of things. We know that capitalism makes you suffer. Go ahead, you know, go talk about it. Go sing about it. Talk about it. And then... If it's like, okay, if we expand that even more on, oh, if you give me a little bit more, if you even sing about his sister, then we're buying a ticket. Not only are we going to stream your songs, right? Not only are we going to give you money, we're, we're going to buy a ticket you. to see your show, exactly, which is, of course, this more direct link to the artist, but also more income. But mm. it's, you know, so what is really being demanded is more sensationalism, right? Give me the sensation. I, I'm so, the drudgery of work, Life under this society is mm. so monotonous. It's so painful. Mm. I, I don't feel like I'm actually alive, right? Yeah. Whom amongst us hasn't felt that way, uh, you know, under this society? But, okay, how do we get beyond that? Is it revolutionary yeah. optimism? Is it fighting for revolution? Or is it constituting a, a communist party and, 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 and planning for an insurrection and all that stuff? You know, it's not that. Instead, what it actually is is... Give me more sensation. Make me feel like I'm alive. Shock me to my core. Yeah. But you know what, what a real issue is, is desensitization. So the mm. first time that I saw you're a kid, 
Okay, I remember like shopping for CDs and um, listening to The Real Slim Shady by Eminem. And he, and okay. he talks about all this violent stuff, right? Yeah. Like, hi, kids, you want to see me poke something in all of my eyelids? Yeah. Whatever, right? Now when you hear that, it's like, yeah, I've seen Whatever. way worse. I've heard way worse. But for me then, I don't know how old I was, 10 or 11 or something like that. I was like, my naive dumb ass like, went to my mom and was like, mom, do you know what I just listened to? Like, oh, this is crazy. <laughs> my mom was like, what the fuck? Like, one, don't listen to it. Two, why are you telling me about it as if I'm yeah, going to be like, that's wild. amazing. So there's just like this, these levels of desensitization. So where the first time you hear is like, oh, my God, this is amazing. So it's like, yeah, all right, your homie's dead. Okay, well, yeah, that's, that's in every song, you know. Give me more. And every, every time you need more of that sensationalism to feel alive in this society. But, but the answer to your suffering is revolution. It is not mm. more and more sensation. Yeah. Yeah, really seeing like, like I'm suffering, you're suffering, we're all suffering, right? Yeah. But let me not pay attention to that. Let me instead pay attention to this artist suffering because yeah. that's what's going to keep me away from, from myself, like from yeah. confronting what my pain and my trauma looks like right yeah. now and how I can get past it. Yeah. But let me focus on that artist and their traumas and not even like uh, from a perspective of let me uh, understand what this collective trauma is, what this collective sadness is yeah. like so that we can do something about right, it. Exactly. But let me just escape what is w it within myself. Exactly. And, it, and she kind of questions the responsibility of the artists mm. in society. And it is true. Artists have a pretty significant responsibility under capitalism. Mm. And that's due to the role of, of the capitalist artist. Because under feudalism... The artist really wasn't much special, right? Just another, in most cases, just one of the many handicrafts. Sure. Thing. Or in the courts, you know, it's like you're a jester or maybe yeah. you're under the patronage under some aristocrat and they decided your every move and step. All to that. say, <laughs> as an artist, you didn't have the stardom or at least it was incredibly rare. There are some mm. cases, but usually it was incredibly rare. Now, you know, we're really looking for art. You see that with Palestine, you know, a lot of people are like, well, what did the artist say about this? What did my favorite artist yeah. say? Which then has a dual side to it. Like, one, we can't change that while we're under capitalism. Mm. It's, it's, it then becomes something where, okay, so we need to organize artists, which is what we're doing with Art for the People. Mm -hmm. So we need to organize artists, educate artists, so that artists yeah. carry out the, the, the right political line in their messaging. Um, but there's another component to it where, yeah, it sh but it shouldn't actually be that way. But we need a revolution and we need to move beyond capitalism to fix that issue. Yeah. So, so let's just really focus on organizing artists, politically educating artists, so that this platform that artists have is being used for good. Yeah. No, 100%. And so there's this other part of it that I wanted to highlight, too which goes, married a treetop for money and new crib, your daddy just lost his petty capitalism. Mm. So there's actually a lot to this, but I'm mainly going to focus on your daddy just lost his petty capitalism, which has to do with last time that we talked about future and the class character of claustrophobia and how yep. future is claustrophobia because he's feeling claustrophobic in his mansion he needs to buy a new mansion is very different than the claustrophobia i felt in my small ass efficiency in west miami facts what we also talked about at that point was the paranoia of the big bourgeoisie about the small petty bourgeoisie mm. and that the petty bourgeoisie feels paranoia because they don't want to be proletarianized they don't want to go lose their small business and then having to, to join the workforce for Exactly. And that's, here, and, that, and, and that's really what is talked about here, too. Your daddy just lost his petty capitalism. So the petty capitalism here means a couple of different things. One, capitalism is petty because, know you know, 
sneaking behind your back, praying on your downfall type of things, like petty people. The, the laws of capital will actually do that for you and, and make sure that, you know, most people will not make it in any capacity. So that's one aspect of it. But then this is also really in reference to the class of the petty bourgeoisie, which is, you know, in a very precarious position. I mean, during COVID, like 200,000 small businesses went bankrupt or something. Like, yeah. this is not an easy position to be in. Right. Even though, of course, the petty bourgeoisie, small business owners, exploit their workers. Yeah. And very intensely so in order to be able to survive. But there's this other aspect to it where, again, the petty bourgeoisie is in a very precarious position. So that petty capitalism reflects both these which is then tied to this entire paranoia that No Name feels about her fan base and whether they genuinely support her. So mm. it's a pretty deep reference. Yeah, no, that's such a, that's such a deep, deep cut. Um, because, like, that is a genuine fear of the artist, even though No Name isn't, you know, going on about us buying a second mansion like Future. <laughs> it is still an issue, and she's, I think facing that that question of like all right like i am facing like the 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 precariousness of like my position as an artist and my fame and wanting to sell tickets and and wanting to sell my music but also in that position of like like what would happen if i have to join the workforce again and i don't think that that's something that artists think about or dream about. Mm, that's true. And especially because there's so many stories of artists blowing through all their money or not understanding their advance. Yeah. You know, all these aspects to it. And that actually raises some interesting questions of like, well, is it no name herself, Petit Bourgeois, due to her class position with her music? She's not this big famous musician, but I would assume she has a decent income yeah and also as an artist you're a producer of ideology mm. which is a petty bourgeois class position different than a small business owner yeah so those anxieties are even more so filled so i think that's a really great point that you brought up due to the fact that as an artist specifically under capitalism she deals with that paranoia and those fears but then also as a producer of ideology, being petty bourgeois, you deal with those things too. Yeah. Damn. Damn. <laughs> That's right. I think we got a lot out of this song with No Name. Talked about a lot of different themes. Yeah. No, we sure did. We sure did. And, you know, I'm excited to jump into some questions if yeah. you are. So... On our Instagram at artforthepeople.soflow. Come check us out. We got great stuff on there. We got posts. We got reels. I mean, th this is the worst way I've ever heard anybody promote <laughs> an Instagram profile. We've got posts. We've got reels. In case you didn't we've know got what stories. Instagram yeah, exactly. Was. But we've got really good posts that highlight everything, all the things that we talked about, different class contradictions that emerge through art, the role of the artist, the way it ties to capitalism and reels and, and videos that, that break these things down mm -hmm. related to topics like Palestine, uh, but also capitalist crises. We have, a, we have a post about this song too. Exactly. If you want to learn more about exactly. it. We have a post about all art being political. Oh. So find out a little bit more about that, but we also have, you know, something to promote. We have yeah. the... Uh, so, as you know, Art for the People is an artist collective based here in South Florida. And so we're having a political education session that's open to the public. Yeah, and, and people should reach out to the, to, the, to the Instagram because there's a good chance we might actually change the date for it. Mm. Um, and so if you're interested, please send us a DM so we can keep you updated because we've promoted it on April 27th everywhere. But we might push it back uh, by one week. Mm. So go hit up the Instagram if you want to uh, learn more about that political education go workshop. follow us. That's right. Or if you even want to join, you know, a collective. What does it mean to 
to make art collectively exactly or make political art even if you're just like interested in yeah like learning about art maybe you're not an artist yourself yeah art critic but this question about art and the place of culture in our lives is just so important that it's a big question to answer and how what's the best way to do that is collectively mm. yeah i agree and when we say art critic, it's a very broad notion where if yeah. you talk about songs with your friends, talk about movies with your friends, if you try to break it down together, you're an art critic. Yeah. So anybody who's just interested in breaking down, peeling back the different layers of art, you have a place in art for the people. You have but a place. Also, what we do is we post uh, stories where we ask questions, where we ask people to send in questions about art and politics. Send us your question. And we actually got some really good questions that we narrowed down to two. Well, one big shout out to Jeremy Lawrence Downs, who has, without fail, sent us amazing questions every week. Shout uh, out. But unfortunately, for today's episode, we didn't have time to answer But we are questions. giving him the shout out, which is what we, matters we've got to. the most. Ten JLD, right. this is for you. JLD, that's right. Let me ask you the first question, though. This is from Ashwin Nair, from at the Ashwin Nair Show. Uh, and he's asking, as a musician, how can we collectivize the musical art form and musicians? The only paradigm that up and coming artists of these kinds can emulate is a bourgeois individualist celebrity paradigm. How do we break out of this form to form a new socialized paradigm? Yeah. That's a big question. It's a big one. And it's a really, really good question. So basically, I mean, let's really break down the question first, right? So as a musician, how can we collectivize the musical art form and musicians? So there's even, in terms of collectivization, different aspects to it because I assume that it's collectivization in a way that is, at the very least, progressive or mm. against capitalism mm. because... In a way, a record label is a collective of artists, but it's an unequal collective, right? It's it's one where the the record label mm. uh, owners own the masters, typically, of mm. the artists. And you have all kinds of different deals that you can strike with artists, but a yeah. lot of times there's much more... The record label owners have more power, ownership, in many different ways and money. Yeah. So we're probably not talking about that kind of collective. We're talking about this equal collective and not just a way to bring musicians together, but to collectively make music, to collectively deal with musical issues, political, mm. theoretical issues, and to put them into practice together. Yeah, where do you even start with that? That's such a yes. big question. Yes, because uh, and then you know we continue where we're kind of adding more to it. Is that the only paradigm that up that up and coming artists? So that's also an important part of the question. That up and coming artists, new artists who try to make it, that the best or really the only way to do that is you know you got your Instagram page, you got your TikTok. It's all this this individual page. And you got to crank out content. You got to crank out one video a day, maybe more. And it's this complete individualized work stream. Mm. And when you're cranking out one video a day, even if, let's say, three days in the month, you make 10 a day, however you want to do it, that's actually a very isolating experience mm. because it's so much work to make the video, think of the video, edit the video, release it, comment, like it's so it's much It's a lot work. of mental capacity and a lot of like actual manual labor yep. that you yep. have to do. And if you're just doing it, if you're the main artist doing it and thinking about these things, yeah. it's, a lot of, it's a lot of thoughts that you just keep to yourself. So much. It's so much. And then when you put it out in the ether, it's kind of in this online platform, right? So... I think the issue that we're getting to is that, well, one, how do we do things in a way that is not bourgeois? I'm going to start with the most mm. annoying answer first. It's like, well, on the broad scale, we actually cannot, we need to make a revolution, right? So mm. this is not going to be the whole story, just as a heads up. But I do think it's important to start here. 
I think there's plenty we can do now. But we're constantly going to see all these different problems in bourgeois society that we're attempting and seeking to solve that we won't be able to actually fully solve on the scale of society until mm. we make revolution, yeah. have a socialist transition to communism, yeah. where we're really able to push for a collective approach to labor, or this is a form of labor, yeah. to resolve the contradiction between mental and manual labor. Not very important if you don't know what that is, but also to say there's lots of problems that we're seeking to solve yeah. that we cannot. But we can, in a way that politicizes people and, and, and brings forward the understanding of the necessity of revolution, while you're making cool shit together and, 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 and really collectively making art in a way that is meaningful yeah. on the way there. And I mean, to give an example, for me, I've been wanting this as an artist for basically almost the last 10 years where I was like, well, all the avenues that are open for me are individualistic or a bourgeois. Mm -hmm. The, the mm -hmm. collectives that I do see are essentially capitalist endeavors. Yeah. So what did I do? I started Art for the People, which was extremely hard to start with. I don't think it's, a, it's as hard for people now because lots yeah. of people are asking these questions. Yeah. When I was trying to do this at first, a lot of people were interested on a theoretical level, but they didn't want to put this into practice. Mm. But basically... Like saying, this is so important, we yeah. need this. Good luck. The key thing is to build that political unity with people and to start a collective three to four people mm. that is really rooted in, I mean, best case scenario in Marxism. Mm. But in general, anti-capitalism, I would say, mm. which is a notion that might be a bit too broad and vague, but can still be helpful, I think, in, in, in pooling and bringing people together. Yeah, for sure. And that just being, you know, for us to, like, lay it out, you know, anti-capitalism as, like, capitalism cannot be reformed. And um, that... That means that it can only like be solved through revolution. Yeah, of course. Like if there's a social system that you can't reform, well, but you want to do away with it, well, you need something in the place of that system for anti-capitalism. Yeah. Well, we need to organize our economy and, and politics in some ways. Of yeah. course, okay, what what comes in the in the in the place? Yeah. And then if you get to well, okay, so we can't produce for profit. That means you need to produce for need. And voila, you're 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 you've already. You're at socialist transition and communism, but, sure, yeah, but yeah, that yeah. leap can be a bit tricky for people. So it's okay, cool. If you don't want to think about that too much right now, just think of it in general terms. Okay, we're against anti-capitalism. Yeah. But so you need a core group. The reason why is that the forces, which I think your question, you really highlight well, is that the forces of bourgeois society is going to try to turn everything you're doing into either a for-profit venture or to a nonprofit, which in our society is just mm. another capitalist venture. Yeah, for sure. So if you don't have that core group of people that have a relatively high level of political unity, you're not going to be able to grow any kind of collective of artists. Now, of course, as somebody who started Art for the People, I'm going to tell the people, you should probably start something like Art for the People, <laughs> you know, yeah. because I do think it's been a successful way to organize artists so the way that we've done it is we, I, I sent out, I reached out to all the artists I knew here in Miami, and I was basically like, or South Florida at large, and I was basically like, do you think we need to make more political art? Yeah. Okay. Do you think we should make political art against capitalism? Yeah. Do you think we should do that together? Yeah. All right, cool. I bet. And then you just get a whole bunch of people like that in a room, and then it's like, all right, well, let's pick something to make art about. And so you can do that mainly online, or you can do that through like a show. That's what we did. We mm. picked the topic. Neither uh, politics, uh, ne uh, sorry, neither Republicans nor Democrats serve the people. Yeah. And we put on a show about it. People liked it. More artists came to the collective. Obviously, there was so much hard work that went into this, right? But but basically, it really was that simple that it needs to be a political organization first. Mm. And so 
if you don't have that core tight-knit group of people that have built a high level of political unity together, if you don't really chart forward a way to organize artists, then any type of collective approach to making art is going to become just, just basically for profit with the politics hollowed out or nonprofit. Those are really the only two other ways. So basically, like, collectives can exist, you know, in any, in any form, but if we really want it to be in this progressive element of, like, how do we combat capitalism? How do we combat this individualistic aspect of let's 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 just get big, quick, fast, big money, big money, big money? <laughs> then we have to think about the collectivization of artists, um, and then put politics in command of that. Oh, um, what do you mean by that? Putting politics in command. So that basically means we put politics in, in any decision that is being made in any uh, strategy in, in any way that we implement it we have to always make sure that the politics are what's commanding the decisions of each of these steps so in this case collectivization of artists making a collective of artists but for what what's the political purpose is it for my individual gain is it for each person's individual gain like politically that's like individualistic yeah. and promoting capitalism yeah. or are we doing this in a way of promoting uh, of, of promoting anti-capitalist politics of promoting not just progressive politics but politics that are are actively challenging the current system that we're in and encouraging people to to think about what are the alternatives mm. and what do we need to get to reach those alternatives mm. um, and every step of of that collective collective process at growing at changing the structures has to be with that political those political questions in mind first mm. before anything rather than how do we just get big are we getting big be, to to just gain notoriety big money big money or are we getting big in order to promote better politics you know, big communism. and then how do we get big to promote co big communism is by putting politics in command. That's no, that's such a good point. And if you don't put politics in command, you're going to put profit in command. Mm. Even if you don't, even if you're not planning on doing that. And I yeah. think that's so important that different social forces in the society are going to push us in so many different directions and most of those different directions are into capitalist mode of thinking, which is putting profit in command. Yeah. And so if we don't protect ourselves from that by diligently really changing our world outlook and doing that together with other people and thinking about every decision is, well, this is going to lead me in either of two pathways. This is either going to, this, this either promotes capitalism or it promotes anti-capitalism, which is just communism. Yeah, and really thinking about about that, you know, lost my train of thought. Well, that's because we went really deep into the question in terms of what s social forces are working against us in this society in terms of individualizing becoming a big artist or becoming any artist, individualizing that mm. entire process mm -hmm. and how hard it is to counterpose a collective approach because m those collectives typically don't exist. Mm, so people need to make those collectives. So true. And the predominant ideology or like the status quo is capitalism, you know, is putting like what is what is going to make us most profitable is that ideology of like um, what what is the best for myself it's kind of like this individualistic thing and so combating that is really hard and we need people who will keep us in check mm. who will actively like remind us what we're doing this for yep. and that's always easier to do if we're doing that with a collective of people yeah. who are have that high level of, of unity um, that is uh, really going to make sure that 
that is going to struggle with with each other mm. to make sure that politics is maintained in command because it's really easy to fall into uh, the everyday status quo because that's what we consume every day. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. But I think you put that really well. Um, and yeah, if people are curious, well, how do I start a collective like this? You know, again, reach, reach out to us at artforthepeople.soflow. So there you go. But I think that was really wonderfully put. And um, we have time for one last question, which now, yeah, well, Sochi, I know that you love, adore anime. I dabble. You, you're you're uh, the biggest anime nerd that I know. Every single second of your life is dictated by it. Oh, Can't stop man. talking about it. Now I'm going to get hit up on, on Instagram like, <gasps> Comrade Sochi, you like anime? What is it, but is this like a, in a positive or a negative way? What do you think people are going to say? Let's talk about it. Let's talk about Let's it. Let's talk about well, it. Well, it's also, you're, you're not, you know, before, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me set the record straight. You like anime, but you're not like this Die Hard fan, right? This is, correct, you know, correct. Just, just, just I just want to make sure that the record yeah, is straight. Uh, let me make sure the slander doesn't reach, isn't disproportionate. A little slander is okay, but not too much. But we have another question from at Pucks Dust. So that's at Pucks.Dust. And their question is, can comic slash manga be used to make socialist art? You know, it's so funny because our comrade Moon sent a, a like an anime style drawing uh, from from the Philippines, from an artist in the Philippines, and for the New People's Army, for the armed wing of the uh, Communist Party of the Philippines. Yeah, and so you know, I was like, wow, like this ties in so well to um, to the question for today, you know, and to like. Oh, can we, can we use this for for a socialist cause? And so to kind of start from like the beginning, you know, like art, like we should take all art forms and use them for the to 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 propel forward the cause of the working class. However, we also have to acknowledge, you know, like the roots of 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 these art forms, right? And so. Um, we have to acknowledge the roots of like what is the root of manga? What in general does does the line of like manga and comics like what does that propel? You know, and so we really have to uh, come to an understanding of that art form, um, and and also understand that it can be wielded uh, for the the strength and the power of the working class. Um, to move forward, um, and like this doesn't this isn't just limited to like manga or comics, but in general to just art forms in general, right? Because there are art forms that have been wielded by the ruling class that are uh, that are really propelled that only the ruling class can really access. Uh, but there are also artists that have used these as tools to to propel. Uh, uh, this this revolutionary or this working class um, power forward, and that's kind of that kind of speaks to the power that that culture has in 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 moving that in moving that those messages forward more than anything. Yeah, and no, I think that's really well put. And and with this question, it's like, well, can we use comics or a manga to to make socialist art? The answer is yes, but then we have to ask the question: Well, why are we choosing this form? Mm. to make socialist art. Mm. And a part of when you ask an artist why they use the tools or the forms that they do, a part of the question is going to be like, well, I like it, or this is something I am used to, this is something I've made you know, mm. this, this art style in for a very long time, or I'm able to really get my message across really well using this specific style. But then we need to move beyond that as well. Um, and so when it comes to uh, manga, I think that an anime, I'm just going to kind of, you know, 
Yeah. Use 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 both interchangeably. I, I know they're very different. I know they're very different. <laughs> but we're just gonna. A lot of it is used. Or, the the culture around it tends to be very reactionary, mm. or just like politically negative. Now, okay. I now have millions of people screaming at me all the progressive animes that have been made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And why... Um, the voices are in our heads. Trust. Always. Oh, they always are. Why One Piece is the greatest communist anime that's ever been made, for example, right? Or... Um, Neon Genesis. Neon Genesis, or there's a really popular... Or like there's a Karl Marx anime, which I love. I loved it so much. So good. <laughs> but a lot of the culture around it is reactionary. Mm. So I think different forms have different audiences. And so I think it's very important to think about the people you want to reach. So is this the petty bourgeoisie? Are these the semi-Marxists? Mm. Or is this the proletariat? Mm. Is this the industrial proletariat? Who really consumes these things? Yeah. Now, of course, in any audience, you're going to have class contradictions, but different audiences are tend to be predominantly bourgeois, petty bourgeois, or working class, especially yeah. with mainstream styles, right? If you're, yeah. you're going to ask, well, okay, pop music, what's the class character of the audience of pop music? Well, it's so large that even if I would say, well, it's predominantly petty bourgeois, there's so many working class People listening to pop music, it's like, yeah. okay, well, yeah, but you make pop music, it's still going to reach probably the people that you want to reach. Yeah. Is that the same with manga? That is such a good question. What do you think? Um, I really don't know. I really don't know what, what the masses are that, that watch manga. I think that... They read manga. That read manga, sorry. You know this. Very, very particular. <laughs> Read manga, watch anime. Um, but I imagine, you know, it's a younger, it's a younger demographic. It's a younger demographic that might be like petty bourgeois or like student base, um, largely. I think so. I think that's a big section of it. I, I do think there's plenty of working class people who watch anime. Mm. Um, I do think it, there, there's a large student base there as well, but then there's the, the, the question of, well, yeah, well, do they watch anime or do they read manga, you know, for example? Because that's mm. already a pretty important that's differentiation a difference, yeah. there. Um, and then what kind of animes do does the petty bourgeoisie watch and yeah. what kind does the working class watch? Is that the same? Yeah. Of course, it would be great if we had a large communist party that would be able to take on this level of social investigation, we probably don't have access to that level of data, would be great, but even in your immediate surroundings. And then also part of it was comics, you know? Mm. I mean, so for comics, does the working class mainly consume comics in terms of comic books? Comics on Instagram? Online. Yeah. And even online, like, is that on Instagram? Is that through memes that just use like mm. a general comic panel. Yeah. And what kind are, are popular? Yeah. I'm asking all these questions because I, have, I, don't, have the, <laughs> I don't have the answers, oh. right? But I think f even for artists to just sit instead of being like, I want to make this, to be like, well, why am I choosing the forms that I'm choosing? Why mm. am I choosing the level of distribution that I'm choosing? And, yeah. and, and, and what part of those choices have to do with the audience that I want to reach? Yeah. And what part has to do with kind of my personal preferences? Yeah. Of course, what we would recommend is for comrades to do things that intersect both those things, right? That um, really have artists use the forms that they love. Like, you know, I rap. I make rap music. Yeah. You know, I want to continue to do that because yeah. I love it and it makes me feel alive and it makes me feel great. And it makes me feel connected to myself yeah. and to others. So I want to continue to do that. But I should think, well, is, is, is rap, is a verse, is a song going to be the most conducive mm. to all 
the messages that I want to get across? And the answer is no. It will probably behoove me to learn, you know, writing fiction, maybe writing poetry, other things, which, which is fine. It doesn't mean yeah. I should stop rapping, but it, but it means that I should connect. Just thinking about. Exactly. What are the political goals that I want to achieve? Yeah. And to who? And what forms of art does that connect to? That's my baseline. Whoa. And then in terms of the genre or the forms, yeah. then you get to ask a million other questions. I mean, even for rap, what kind of beat do I use? Mm. Do I use like an old, grimy, n early 90s boom bap with a haunting piano sample, some good horns? Or is it like a trap beat, you know? These are questions. and <laughs> These are questions. These yeah, are so questions. <laughs> and really asking, like, how do I... Again, put politics in command of these if yeah. I want to do something that's Oh, we're that's back for the to it. Class. That's the name of the book, right? That's, <laughs> that's the name of the movie. That's the name of a great podcast, actually. Shout out Politics in Command. Look it up on all streaming platforms. But, but yeah, it, it's the same thing. And of course, when you really get down to it, or you know, when you live your life as a communist, like me and Yao Sochi do, then you try to put politics in command with pretty much every decision that you make. And then you just see, po and then you, once yep. you see politics everywhere, you can't unsee it. And it's down to big questions and small questions. And it, it just becomes a, mm. a, a reflex. Mm. And I think everything is political can, can be kind of this violent abstraction is what I call it, which means that it's a very unhelpful abstraction. It's an abstraction mm -hmm. that actually gets you away from all the concrete questions you need to ask. But just saying if like, okay, well, you know, what kind of job should I take or should I organize yeah. with other people? You know, if you say, well, well, everything is political. It's like, okay, well, that, that's very unhelpful. But it can also be used as a rational abstraction, which means that, well, in the general, if you think about your life, Yes, everything is political, and you should think through things in a political way, but that should lead yeah. you to all these particular small examples of Facts. politics. So I think that brings us to the end of today's episode. And something we have a surprise plan, actually, is Soch is going to sing for us uh, an original song. Uh, what was it called again, your original song? Oh, it's called Politics in Command. Put politics in command. Follow MCR. Mm. Watch out for dear Eleanor. Uh, uh. I, li I like you. how you threw the robot in there. Watch out for dear Eleanor. Uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, I just put you on the spot. Saw what happened. Thank you for, for, for playing along. That was a beautiful song. Yeah, big shout out to Miami Community Radio. Big shout out to dear Eleanor for letting us use this space. Big shout out to Mauricio behind the keys, behind the cam, behind the speakers, you know, shout doing, out. doing, doing all the technical stuff. We got to show love to the people behind the scenes, too. And um, you know what? I'm going to put another shout out to you that I haven't done yet. Big shout out to you. Thanks. Big shout out to you, Spacey it would have been It would have been much better had you just been thanks. And that was the program. <laughs> That's the show. But that was the show. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.